If you haven't watched Generation Loss, do not watch this video. Please watch Founders Cut. You know, you know, you know that, you know that just incredible death scene right at the end of Generation Loss? Yeah, it was not real. He's not dead. Okay. Okay, 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 there is so much to talk about. Hello. I have not made a video like this, but I feel like there is a lot, a lot that needs to be talked about. So, we have some theories, we have some things that were different. Okay, so, Generation Lost, The Founder's Cut, came out recently. Came out, uh, June 15th. But there is a lot to look into. First of all, before Generation Loss came out, we got a couple interesting images on Twitter. There were designs for the accessories that Sneak, Charlie, and Rambu are wearing, the glasses, the hat, and his mask. And basically it's like connecting into their skin, into their head, into their brain. So these, these accessories like have control over the people and control what they see, can control what they're thinking, controlling what they're doing, and it's how Showfall Media keeps it running. Oh, and they're designed by Hatch, because of course they are. <sighs> and that is very important to touch on later. We're gonna first start with some of the details. There's a lot of details that are different. First of all, Hetch talks so much differently through, through what would be um, episode three. A lot- his dialogue was the only ones re-recorded, and he talks a lot differently. The villainous aspect of him is played up so much more. A lot of the, um, like, it's fine, don't worry about it moments, uh, those are played up a lot more. So he talks- his talks are a lot more- it's a lot easier to tell that he's supposed to be the villain. Because originally, like, most people didn't guess it until the um the bowing at the door moment absolutely i want i need to i need to like compare them side by side to see what dialogue is different because the only different dialogue it said in the in the credits was from hetch yeah so i need to know what i know a lot of the live and die sequence was different but i, I wonder um, if i don't know what else was different the original dialogue when he first meets rambo mm -hmm. that's different the uh, live and live and die um, bit. He's like shouting at uh, him, like, "This was, this is your fault. These are your actions." That also was played up a lot with um, the Germa quotes. There's a quote from Germa mm -hmm. in the locker room mm -hmm. that I didn't. I'm not sure if I caught before, but mm -hmm. it's not about what you were told to do. Mm -hmm. It's about what you did. It's not about what you were told to do, it's about what you did. It's the whole thing! Yeah, especially- I'm especially... telling Rambo, which is like, it doesn't matter if you were being controlled, you, you still did made it. The you still did it. And I think that was pushed a lot harder in this um, box sequence. Exactly! Um, cause I, he like, I don't think- in the other one he like, doesn't raise his temper at all, but he like, fully is like, shouting at him. Um, yeah. But it's like, these are your actions, this is your fault, you're not being controlled, you still- this is still you. And then he's like denying it, no, 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 and- but it's- it's still him. It's still him doing it. And the episode cut, the episode cut, they changed where they cut it because originally the third episode was all the way from like, right when he, um, discovered uh, that he's in a show and he's like staring at the show full media. That's where it like originally cut but this time it showed the um, the, the little thing for episode 3 the hero right at the beginning of live and die Basically when show fall media took control back on that another thing I noticed when When Sneak was having his moment The, um, yeah. the show fall symbol was not in the corner none of what would be our third episode had the show fall symbol in the corner um, but it did it through all of the second one, except for when, um, Sneed was having his moments. First of all, it's all of what would originally be episode three. Basically from where Hetch allows him to see, and he can, like, see that it's a show, the Show of All Media logo disappears. But it comes back during the live and die sequence. And also it disappears when 
Sneak is having his moment when, um, like, Sneak, uh, gets his hat back on, he goes out, he gets the mask get put on him. When, when he has the mask put on him and he, when he goes to sit down, the Shovel Media logo isn't there. And the, the Shovel Media logo, like, is signifying when they have control. Because, like, when they have control of all their characters. Because Sneak was, like... Sneak was having his moment, and then, um, he- and then Rambu and Charlie were, like, running around the facility during all of episode 3. And the Shofu Media logo wasn't there, but once Shofu Media gained back control of the show, and specifically the Shofu Media logo wasn't there for Sneak when it was the moment where Sneak was just, like, stint- was, like, sitting there and there was no movement, it was the camera was focusing between Sneak and the puzzler. And then- there was like like a and then afterwards when the show from comes back it's like a release of breath and then the show continues so it's like a glitch in the show almost where like no one's moving it's real it's it's very interesting and then when the show media logo comes back in a live or die that's because uh the show is back up and running the way that it should be the the mask flashes the mask flashes it's a lot easier to tell now that the mask flashes um are signifying memories coming back uh like when he's looking at the tapes um, in episode one, when the urn spills in episode one, um, yeah, it's it's very interesting. And the factory, the f the factory reset. So, first of all, the factory reset was absolutely confirmed. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so now that's that's absolutely confirmed is when the rat like goes and touches the back of his mask in the original it, it like doesn't show anything but like we had a we had a little we had a little theory because afterwards he was acting like absolutely so npc like he was like man i wonder what we should do now and it was absolutely confirmed because we got that factory reset screen and so um it's it's just showing yeah they 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 um they they uh, lost control of the mask just a little bit, and then they had to like fix it almost, which was absolutely lovely. Piggybacking off of that, all of the all of the um, NPC energy on all of the characters was bumped up a whole bunch, like especially with Sneak. So also, um, there's so much. They give them all so much NPC quality. I know. It's. Like, they, the cutting out the exploration, sure, it's to help content, condense, mm. but it's also... Especially with Sneak, he was just like, both him and Rambu were just like, standing there for, like, pretty much the entire second half of, um, the Mastermind of the Warehouse. They're just like, man, what should we do next? Maybe we should go look over there. Like, and that's happening for all of them, but specifically those two, because they had their, um... They had they they both got reset during this during the show, which is very interesting. <laughs> also, uh, with Hetch's re-recorded dialogue, he doesn't call Rambu his name until the live and die sequence. There's another really big thing to point out with Hetch's changed dialogue, mm -hmm. which is he never calls you Rambu until the end. Oh yeah. Because he's trying. Not to reveal that he knows who he is. Yeah. Ah. Yes. Hedges is constantly telling him not to dwell, not to worry, to don't stop dwell, thinking worry. about all the things he's seen. Holy shit. How yeah. long have I been here? It would only upset you. He He's calling him Hero for all of it, because, like, that's his title. He's the hero. And... It just makes it because he's like he's trying to show that he doesn't he doesn't know that he's not with Shofel, that he's not in control but he is and then when he finally does show it he's um it's just in living die live and die sequence when he calls him Rambu because he never tells him his name also the thank you <laughs> the audience has voted for you to die <laughs> Thank you? No. Thank you.
He said, thank you. He said, God, thank you. Holy shit, no, 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 no. When it actually happened, I was devastated. Like, literally, listen. Right, right at the end, right when they said, the audience has voted for you to die, they zoom in, very quiet, he says, thank you, and then the box closes. <laughs> like, that was so sad, and then on stream afterwards, uh, they were talking about, um, about how they wanted to do that during the original, but then they just forgot. It's it's just absolutely devastating they're just they say thank you like what ah, no i can't i can't deal i absolutely cannot deal and yeah squiggles squiggles also squiggles is um squiggles is intro um to the whole show right after the um the urn moment and the mask flashing squiggles um has these like key has these like little frames of him um like introducing the show, like, hey, this is our show. And that's really, it's like all of the glitches, I'm assuming, are what they're, are what they're mentioning. It's, oh, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Also, Squiggles being cut out of the, um, first and third episodes. And Squiggles. And Squiggles. Oh my god. He shows up right at the, um, uh, roundabouts. And because he was in everything, he was in stuff before that, he was cut out there. And then Squiggles actually shows up after uh, the carousel continues through all of two and then ends at three. Or this, what would this, what, what would be the start of three, but isn't. Because Squiggles was completely cut from the uh, first episode. Uh, he only shows up during the, um, during the roundabout and he stays throughout all of what would be episode two but he doesn't he's not in episode one he's not in episode three when he was before which is really interesting and i'm not a hundred percent sure what that means but i find it really interesting that they went through all of the effort to cut him out also all of the um choice pop-ups that are in the um that are in the original when it's like it pops up on the side of the screen and then you can see the, the percentages as they're um voting you don't see that you only see um what the audience chose um where squiggles would usually be uh except except the um the one choice that's in the third episode um where they're choosing the code the one where the one that rambu ignores that's the only one where it pops up on the screen and you can see the percentages which i think is also really really interesting also the um the cuts, the cuts at the end, right before the box closes. On 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 stream, he 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 told us those are his childhood. Those are actual childhood photos of them. Like that is just them as a child, which is just absolutely devastating and adds so much more to the story. Because the mask flashing um, right before he gets killed, um, they've confirmed that that was 
Showfall Media putting all of the all of the hero's memories back. And I think that's a really good way of showing that it was bringing the memories back and it's just their actual goddamn childhood photos. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's... It's a lot. There's a lot of changes that happened in Founder's Cut, which are very, very interesting. I'm not sure how many of these uh, notices were also in the original, but they popped out a whole lot more in Founder's Cut. On to what you guys really came here for, the theories. The first one that I want to talk about goes back to the uh, photos posted on Twitter um, of the designs of the mask, glasses, and hat of uh, Sneak, Charlie, and Rambu, and it is about Austin. Because every other character has some sort of mask or accessory or something like that. Because Rambu has his mask, um, Charlie has his glasses, Sneak has his hat, Nikki has her hat and glasses. They all have accessories except for Austin. He's the only one who doesn't have an accessory. And he's also the most, he's also the most lucid one. Cause he, he is seeing, he's seeing everything. Because the, um, the, the accessories can alter what they're seeing, what they're thinking, what they, they can alter their memories, alter what they're, what they're seeing and what they think they're doing. Okay. Um, so, okay. Uh-huh. Uh, Austin's, like... I have, I have so, I have so many thoughts about Austin. Oh my I god! I have so many thoughts about Austin. So, I because he's the only one without an accessory, he can see all of it. In the carousel, he keeps, every time the camera comes to him, he stares dead into the camera and says, help. And he usually follows it up by his children to seem innocuous, but he, like, stares dead into the camera and goes, help. Every single time it comes around to him. And he when he joins his- He calls out on it the first time. Mm -hmm. He's like, you sick fuck. I know, when he's, when, like, with Frank, he's like, you sick, you sick fuck, because he can see that Frank is not a blasting skeleton. He's like, I don't cut him, of course. And, like, he, he drinks back every time he shouts at him. Yeah. Like, he's, he, and then, especially when, um, when he dies, when he dies to, like, the, the weird spinny thing, he's like, why is, why are you reacting? Why are you exactly. reacting? Exactly. <sighs> But Austin doesn't have an accessory, so he his sight is not being altered. So he can see what's actually happening. He can see stuff like the fact that Frank is not a plastic skeleton and is an actual corpse. Which has been uh, talked about from the previous episodes that Frank is just an actual corpse. But none of them can see it because Shuffle Media is preventing them from seeing it, basically. But Austin can basically see through the curtain. And this is shown a lot in his sequence of being in the roundabout, because every time the camera pans to him, he just looks dead in he looks dead into the camera and goes, help. Just Yeah. And none of none of the other characters really do that. They're like they're crying basically. Um, but it's mostly a theatrical cry, but he looks dead into the camera and goes, help, which is just terrifying. And also when he's brought into his, when he's brought into the room and uh, he sees who was it? I forgot. He sees he sees um, he sees the other the other person die in the um, the the spinning wall. He sees the blood coming out and he's yelling at Rambu and Sneak. He's like, react, why aren't you reacting, you sickos? He's because he can see that it is just an actual person dying, and Rambu and Sneak are not able to see that because Showfall is basically preventing them from being able to see that pretty much. And also when like Jerma is yelling, Jerma is like threatening them. He he yells back. He's like you're sick. You're ter you're how can you do something like this? You're sick because he can see just actually what is happening. And now for some more that are just from Founder's Cut. So, the, um, the little video that you get at the end of Founder's Cut, Reward, let me play it.
So right at the end, right at the end it says, from the founder. So, I am, this one doesn't have very much evidence behind it, but I'm having, I'm, I'm thinking a little bit that all of the white texts in all of these um, little video and all of the uh, smaller videos are the founder. Like in the original one where it's just like, learn the history, find the founder, uh, all the, like the don't hesitate, all of those things. I think everything that has white text is the founder. Though then again, that one does not have much evidence and there's a couple things that contradict that. But at least some of the white text is the founder, maybe? Yeah. We also got one other image on Twitter, which was an image of like a tape player. And it was, um, and there's some distort, and there's some text at the bottom that reads, This is the first treatment you've come to in a while, Miss Rhodes. Which is not related to anything that we've ever seen before. So, also, right at the end of Founder's Cut, there is this little sequence, which, um, I will play right now. So it's, it's this, it's this, um, it's this Miss, Miss Rhodes who's talking about her dreams and then there's this other character who is, um, who is just like, yeah, you should, you should, like, your dreams are scary, you should write those down. So, the Miss Ro it's, the images of, um, not a VHS tape, tape player, it's a cassette tape player. And, um, they're talking about writing, writing down their, their dreams, and then the Miss Rhodes character is like, please, I have a request. And then the other character's like, yes. And then they're just like, please, call me Zero. So. So. So, 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 this is all related to whatever, whatever the, um, the next creation of the founder is, whatever the next episode is, um, because of the zero, it's related to Generation Zero, um, the story of Lost Field, which was announced about a year ago and is now what is being worked on, I believe, which, yeah, I believe that the, the, these two characters, the character of Miss Rhodes slash Zero and the person that she's talking to are related um, to the uh, Lost Field, all, all, all related to the Lost Field incident. And I also believe that the Lost Field incident will be in an audio format because of the um, tape player and because of Rambu talking about how it's going to be in a different format. Um, I believe that it's going to be in an audio or written format. Also, and also, I think that the Miss Rhodes character has watched the social experiments, and this is, like, their reaction to it. Because Rambu also talked about how they wanted to, um, 
like way, way, way in the beginning, they were talking about um, they want to do an analog horror, and then also about in the, about these tapes, and then also include the what what happened to the people who found the tapes. I believe Generation Zero is the story of the people who find these tapes, and all the other generations are the tapes. Um, and I think that Miss Rhodes has found these tapes, and that we're in for a ride. <laughs> we are in for a ride, guys. Also, one other thing that um isn't that is not a stretch. There is something special on the um the physical version of the tapes. Which, yeah, I think we all know this at this point. Because right at the end, it's like, in the um, reward section, it's like a gift from me to you. Communication is key. Like, work together. And then, um, on their stream, Rombu keeps m kept mentioning that, they sh that people should buy the tape. So there is some difference between the tape and the um, YouTube version of Founder's Cut. And that's that little difference is going to be some sort of hint to whatever is happening next or an, or a continuation of the story. But then again, Rambu's also said that the story of the social experiments is concluded. So, I'm not sure. Once some once people buy the tape and look into it, we are we're going to we're going to find out what the differences are and what they mean. And finally, the big one that you were all been waiting for, the one that I mentioned right at the beginning, that Rambu is not dead. That he never died. Yeah. Uh, the flashback right in the beginning, when he has the pot, he's flashing to the let me die moment. He's flashing Wait, to- Right at the beginning, when the ashes spill and they break and then his mask flashes and he's like, no, 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 not again. He flashes to let me die. It's a loop. It doesn't end at let me die. It's a loop. It's a loop. The, he doesn't die when he dies. He doesn't die when he dies. He doesn't die when he dies. He doesn't get the blessed relief he was after. So. Right in the beginning, when he knocks over the ashes... He says, no, not again. And then there's like a glitched version of when he, when he's, when he's yelling, <laughs> let, <laughs> me <die." laughs> let me die. So, what, and the, that let me die is the exact one that they have, that happened in the show that was recorded. So this can mean one of two things. The first is that at some point previously, like we know that this show has we know that this show has been run over and over again because of the um the recent video that we got on the Generation Lost channel which like um but it wasn't perfect so I ran it again and again and again and again and again and again and again I'll show you that clip right now So we know that this story was run over and over again. So either so either he he was in the live and die situation and he begged to die and they let and uh they and he was let live. He was he was voted to live. Or and what I think happened, he begs to die. They close the box on him, but he he doesn't die, and he has to continue the story. Because the founder keeps saying they ran the story over and over again to get it perfect. And the story includes him dying at the end. And we also know that if you see someone's blood, it doesn't necessarily mean they're dead, because they have to revive the characters again to run the story again and again. So I believe that the founder- that the- that- Rambu never died. We never had a choice whether he lived or died, because it was it. This that was just a that was that was 
That was part of the story, but he was forced to relive the story anyways. We never had a choice. It's a loop. They never let him die. It's a loop. They never... We, nev we never had a choice in it anyway. We never had a choice whether he lived or died. We never had a choice over anything. We never had a choice. <laughs> We never had a choice. We never had a choice. We never could have taken. We never had a choice. We never had a choice. <laughs> it's so goddamn. We never had a choice whether he lived or died. He lived anyway, and he was forced to do that to do that story over and over and over again until they got it perfect. And the founder's cut is that perfect version. And once they got that perfect version, they finally let him die. Which is why we get a longer shot of him after the box. It's like, watches the blood trailing down. I think that's showing us that, yes, this time, he's actually dead. Woof. That's a lot. Uh, please, please let me know what you think of my theories. If you have anything to add, if you have anything that you think I got wrong, please let me know in the comments, and thank you so much for watching.